It's time for Drew's News. And by the way, I have no idea what I'm saying because what's in the prompter is a surprise. I don't even know the headline. That's right. That's why it's so fun. You put the Drew in Drew's News. And today, it's all about you. You've been making headlines your whole life, from big newspaper profiles to rave reviews to even your advice for New Year's resolutions back in 1983. You told people not to smoke, not to drink, and to avoid salt. You also told them they should go see E.T. because, quote, that's good for you. Well, E.T. is still one of the biggest movies of all time, and you're still one of our most beloved stars. Let's take a look at a clip from Entertainment Tonight of you talking about making this iconic film. I could act like myself the whole time on that shoot because Gertie sort of was like me. Sometimes I cry, and she does sometimes cry, and it's a story about a whole family, and I love doing that movie. When you were in E.T. or and even afterwards, a lot of what you talked about is how crazy you were about Steven Spielberg. Are you still such good friends? Yes, we love each other. I go over to his house and we, we play games and we see each other a lot and we're still best friends. Yeah, he, um, yeah, he's like the first person I knew cared. He does care. Can you venture a guess about who is about to join us right now? First person that cared about me. Yeah. Please welcome the man behind countless blockbusters, Oscar, Golden Globe, and Emmy Award winning director who Aww. needs no introduction, Steven Spielberg. Oh, no. Oh, oh, Drew Face. <laughs> I still care about you. I've always cared about you. Ever since that first time, this little blonde hurricane <laughs> walked into an audition in my office and took uh, us by storm, and then soon took the entire world by storm. That was you then, and that is you today. You know, I think one of the people that mean the most to me to be accountable and a good person and have my you know what together is definitely you. You're the person, yeah, I, I wanna, can I tell you something that you've taught me in life? You taught me yeah. that a parent is supposed to make you feel bad when you're not being good. And that you, I, I didn't understand that. Um, and I love my parents, I really do. I wouldn't have the life I have today if it wasn't for them, so I wouldn't change a single thing. And there are so many other attributes that they gave me that other people couldn't. But you taught me that how to be a parent and that um, if you're embarrassed about your behavior around a parent, that that was a good thing because they want the best for you. And you helped me understand emotions that I really wasn't privy to and I knew that you cared and that's why I was highly embarrassed when I wasn't being good, pun intended. <laughs> and I always thought every time I was doing something good or right, um, I would always think about you know, how you would think and feel about it, because I loved making you proud. I live to make you proud. Oh, well, you, 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 thank you. And, and you've made me so proud so consistently for, for I, I don't want to say so many decades, but come on, let's face it, it's been so many decades. It's, um, it's going to be 41, it's 40 years. It's 40 years. Yeah, you were six when you made E.T. Yeah, and I'm turning 46 right now. <laughs> so that's the math years. works. It does. It's perfectly seamless. Steven, you first spotted Drew. She auditioned for Poltergeist. Mm -hmm. She did. And you, but you didn't. She didn't get that role. But you saved her for ET. What do you? Re it was forty years ago. What do you remember about her, though? Well, you have to remember that Poltergeist and, and, and ET were made almost at the same time. Poltergeist came first, and then I began shooting, uh, filming ET literally three weeks after. Our, our production wrapped the last shot of Poltergeist. That's how close those films piggybacked, the productions piggybacked. And when I met Drew for Poltergeist, I immediately thought of her for E.T., which I was actively casting as I was helping to also, as a producer, helping, helping to cast Poltergeist. So, um, you know, Drew was really something. And But, when, but her E.T. interview was the best because when she walked into the office, she didn't want to talk about the movie. She didn't even care what the film was about. She wanted to talk to me about her punk band she was forming. The and Purple Bee Believers. 
None and, of it really uh, existed, but it so inherited. so we put a song in ET, Purple People Eaters, just in order to please Drew to <laughs> to make that story kind of have a full circle. But I, I, if I could tell you one story, when we first started working with ET, the you know the 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 beautiful you know true to life heartfelt puppet. Um, I didn't want anybody to, any of the kids, to really uh, break down that fourth wall and be able to see how E.T. runs. So all the wires came out of E.T. and went through a wall where the operators were, were behind the scenes, working behind a wall. And on the second or third day of shooting, Drew had a secret she wanted to share with me. <laughs> and she walked over and took me by the hand, and she pulled me over to E.T. and she said, look at this. And she pointed at the wires. And then she led me to the wall. <laughs> and then she led me around the wall to the four ET operators sitting around waiting for action. And she said, who invited them here? <laughs> what are they doing here? And I just said, well, they're ET's friends and they're really, really helping ET with his English and with his gestures and, and making him you know, feel like he loves you, which he actually does. And and Drew did not understand that there was a connection. She absolutely never wanted to know that anybody was making E.T. come to life except for E.T. itself. Tell me if this is right, you guys, that it was actually Drew at six years old who came up with the line when she sees E.T. for the first time and she says, I don't like his feet. Yeah, she said that during rehearsal and I said, I said, oh, oh, Drew, can you remember to say that when the cameras are rolling? And she said, okay. And when we rolled the cameras, that was the first thing she said. <laughs> yeah, Drew came up with a lot of lines in the movie that Melissa Matheson ha had not come up with. Because part of the authenticity of the movie is the authenticity of, of uh, 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 you know, McNaughton and, and, and Henry Thomas and Dee Wallace. Uh, and Dee Wallace, who was like one of the kids. And that's why I cast her, because she has such a childlike heart as well. And the only time I wanted to violate all kids being in this movie was when Keys, the only adult, steps into the picture with all the- Peter Coyote. Uh, Peter Coyote. And that was the only time I wanted to violate the rule that E.T. E is a story of, by, and for children. And there's the famous story, and I think we have a follow-up today, courtesy of Stephen, yeah. that when Drew posed for Playboy- <laughs> Yeah. He sent, a, he sent you a quilt, and it said, cover up. Yep. Because that's what parents do. And Stephen, then what happened? <laughs> well, then I sent her the Playboy layout, and I had somebody from an artist come over and do paper doll cutout clothes, which I <laughs> glued onto all of the yep. partially exposed photographs and sent the whole thing back to Drew. Now she's dressed. <laughs> yes. And, and then about a week later, Drew sent me something. And I don't know if you have it there, but she sent me a, a, an apology. That was my response to the Playboy it's being covered up. Yep, yep. And those are still like in one of your rooms in your house. Yes! <laughs> oh my God, there it is! <laughs> yep, I You're made that. a nun. What she said on the picture was, she said the first one was, I'm sorry. The second one was, I've seen the light. And the last thing frame is, um, I'm on, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> you always uh, just inspired me to be my best. And then you held both of my girls, my Olive and my Frankie, you know, Olive right when she was born. She was so little and she fell asleep on your chest. Remember. And then you held Frankie and you just, you know, I come over to your house and I'm just so glad to be a part of your life and I I just, I love you and you've had an incredible family. You know, I was like a first mm. young person in your life. You were, you, you were my training wheels for fatherhood, Drew. I'm so glad. I'm so glad because you have and, such and Kate, an amazing family. Kate loves you to pieces, as you know. Kate adores you and has all these years. You've just made such an incredible family that I love so much. And I love you and Kate, and I love when I'm at your home and hanging out, and it feels so comfortable, and yet it will never not feel so special, and I will always be grateful because um, <laughs> there's no way I'd be sitting here without you.
forever. I love you so much. And thank yeah, you. you for and, and thank you. And let me just say one thing, uh, uh, just a, a little more fatherly advice, but maybe more producerial advice. I want you to direct more. I love Whippet so much. As you know, you came to my office and we sat in the screening room and you showed me a rough cut of your film oh, yeah. for the first time. And then I loved um, I loved our deal, you know, you know, Best Coast, uh, the music video you made in 2000 and I think it was nine or 2011. And I just think you're a gifted director and I want to see you do that more. I love you so you much. Make, you make you continue to make me so proud and I love you too, Drew. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for my life. <laughs> <laughs>